Hello, everyone. My name is Sui Chen. My title is Conditional Cube Attacks on Four Members of Kilot AAD Family. This is a joint work with Zhe Junxiang, Xiang Yongzhen, and Sha Sha Zhang. My report consists of four parts. First, we give the preliminaries of this work. Authenticated encryption with associated data, which is called AAD, is a new type of symmetric key primitives. It can achieve encryption and verification. It has attracted many attentions of cryptographers. In 2013, NIST started the LWC project to solicit lightweight AAD and hashing schemes. In April 2019, NIST announced the 56 candidates in the first round, and in August, there are 32 of them entered in the second round. Keynote Shoot is one of the candidates in the second round. Our work focused on the security of Keynote AAD. Keynote AAD is the AAD scheme of Keynote Shoot. Besides, the security along state in the official design document, there are several researches on the security. But as far as we know, there is no third-party crypt analysis on Keynote AAD from the perspective of algebraic attacks, such as cube-like attacks. And the designers only give a simple statement. So, can Keynote AAD really resist algebraic attacks as the designers stated? If yes, what is the security bound to resist algebraic attacks? So it's very necessary to fill up this gap for a better understanding of the security of Keynote AAD. This is what was the motivation of our work. Now, we give a brief description of AAD. Keynote AAD works based on the underlying permutation called Keylot B. It's an SPM primitive with the B-bit state. Its round function is dilated by PB and composed of three steps. The first step is to XOR a constant to the interstate. We call it at round constant transformation. Then the second step is a nonlinear step by applying the four bit uh, S boxes. We call it sub clone transformation. The last step is a linear step by left rotations. We call it the shift row transformation. According to the difference of the length of K state and road, Keynote AAD consists of four members. The corresponding parameters are listed in this table. The working procedure of Keynote AAD KBR is composed of four phases. They are initialization phase, processing associated dates phase, the encryption phase, and the federalization phase. And this work focused on the security of Keynote AAD against algebraic attacks, particularly the cube-like attacks. So we briefly introduce the cube attacks and the conditional cube attacks here. 
Assuming that f is a Boolean function given a set i, then f can be represented as this form. We call this set i cube set and uh, psi super poly. The cube set i defines a space ci. We call it cube. Then the x word sum of the function f on the space ci we call cube sum is equal to psi. Conditional cube attacks is a variant of cube attack. In pre-processing phase, the adversary can impose some conditions on qubits to form conditional quotients and construct a conditional cube distinguisher. That is, if the conditional quotients hold, then the corresponding cube sum must be equal to zero. Otherwise, its value is inconstant. We say it's unknown. Then, in the online phase, adversary can use the cube to compute the cube sum, and according to the value of the cube sum, uh, we can judge whether the conditional equations hold or load, and further to recover some cases involved in the conditional equations. Next, we introduce the division property. Uh, division property is a generalized integral property. It was proposed by Toto to search for longer integral distinguishers for block ciphers. Later, it's usually used to evaluate the algebraic degree of ciphers. When searching for integral distinguishers, we need to fix the input division property and to judge whether the minimum output division property is equal to 2. But when evaluating the algebraic degree, we need to fix the output division property to 1 and compute the corresponding maximal input division property. And then we regard the maximal input division property as the upper bound on the algebraic degree. Now we introduce our improved framework of conditional cube attacks. The key point of conditional cube attacks is to distinguish the cube sum for given cube site. There are two methods. First one is that when the cube is small, then we can compute the exact value of cube sum by practical experiments. But when the cube is very large, it's impossible to try experiments because the, the computational complexity is O2 to the power n if the size of cube is 2 to the power n. The common way to distinguish the cube sum in this situation is to evaluate the algebraic degrees of the function i using the travel bound. Uh, that is, the degree of the composed Composition function g f is upper bounded by the production of degree g and uh, degree f. Travel bound is straightforward, but is not accurate enough, so it's possible to construct an invalid distinguisher. That is to say, whether the conditional quotients hold a lot, the cube sum is always equal to zero. In order to avoid this situation, we proposed an improved framework using the linearization technique and the division property method, including four steps. For an around encryption, 
we delete by ER. We need to split it into two parts. The fourth part is ERF and the backward part is ERB. Well, RF plus RB equals to R. We use SR to delete the R round output state and SRF to delete the RF round intermediate, intermediate state. PV and SV are public and uh, secret variables. We first classify the public variables as this definition. A linear function can degenerate generate to a linear function after imposing conditions on some public variables. Then we call this var uh, public variables CPF. And others are free public variables is uh, FP, FPV. The first step of our improved method is to linearize the state SRF by choosing appropriate CPF from PV, such that any bit, any bit of SRF can be represented as this form. Uh, in this expression, LSV and QSV only contain secret vesicles, but L is linear, Q is nonlinear. Then next, next step is to construct conditional equations. Note that if we impose condition on LSV as LSV equals to a constant Ci, Ci is a constant uh, it's equal to delta or 1. Then if this constant is 1, the free public variable, V as delta, will stay in the state bit. But if the constant is delta, the free public variable, V as delta, will disappear from this state. In other words, this conditional equation will affect the propagation of this variable in the backward encryption. Thus, the third, part, the third state uh, step is to detect the effectiveness by estimate the maximal algebraic degrees of these monomials in SR, including these variables VI0. We utilize the MILP AD division property method to estimate algebraic degrees instead of the trivial bound. The MILP AD division property has been verified to be the most accurate method for degree evaluation. The last step is to construct conditional cube sites, assuming that the, algebra, the algebraic degrees of this bit are d0 and d1 in different case in different cases, and the corresponding monomials are m0 and m1. Note that m0 and m1 both contain the variable v i zero. Assume the absolute value of d zero uh, minus d one is large, and uh, d one is greater than d zero. In this case, we just need to arbitrarily select d f v p from this uh, this site. To form a cubesite i, the cubesite i must contain the variable v i zero. Then we can obtain 
uh, this distinguisher. If the absolute value of d0 minus d1 is very small, that is, d0 is equal to or very close very close to d1. In this case, we need to go back to step 2 or step 3 to choose other bits of uh, SRF or SR. In third part, we will apply the improved framework to Keynote AAD. Our attacks are launched at the initialization phase in the last respect setting, and there is low associated date. That is to say, after some iteration in the initialization phase, the arbit root, the arbit state is X word with the first plain text P0 and the corresponding cipher text C0 is generated. We will utilize this cipher text to obtain the cube sum. Here we only focus on the primary vision of the uh, Keylot AAD to illustrate our conditional cube attack. For this version, the lo the lungs and the key are one are one hundred and twenty eight bits, and the interstate is two hundred and fifty six bits. The block is sixty four bits. The initial state is loaded by lungs and the key, as this. And the interstate can be represented as a 4 times 64 arrow. S denotes the state, and the upper, the upper index deletes the round. The lower index deletes the row. Okay. We first need to linearize the one round intermediate state. We can choose the higher 64 bits of lungs as CPV and let them all equal to zeros. Then the first bit S1 zero can be expressed as this. Note that N0 is multiplied by K0. So literally, we can use K0 to construct conditional equations. Next, we use MILP added division property to estimate the algebraic degrees of RB round state that the monomials including the variable n0. We found that the first bit of the state have a distinct gap on the algebraic degrees. It can be seen in this table when k0 is equal to 0. The degree is always 0 until the 9 rounds. But when k0 is equal to 1, the degree increases. That is to say, S8 0 does not count n0 if k0 is equal to 0. So we can select n0 as the only one cube variable and the conditional cube distinguisher can be uh, constructed as this. In order to ensure that we can use this distinguisher to recall the value of K0 in the online phase successfully, 
we do experiments to calculate the probability that triple sum equals to zero. The result shows that the 8 round cube sum equals to zero with a probability of 100% if the conditional, if the conditional equation holds. Otherwise, with the probability of 99.22%. In other words, in the online phase, if the truth value of k0 is actually 0, we can compute cube sum only one time to recover this k with success rate of 100%. But if the truth value of k0 is 1, only computing cube sum one time, we can recover this k bit with success rate of 0, 0.78%. The first rate is 99.22%. Naturally, if we compute t times cube sum by changing the long cube variables, then the succeed rate can be calcul uh, calculated as this. When t is low less than 1500, we can recover k0 with success rate of 100%. Now we discuss the complexity to recover k0. Computing one time cube sum needs test encryptions and two lenses. Thus, the computation and date complexities both are this. Because the linear line of k lot b is word-based rotation, therefore it has a translation invariant property. So we can construct the cube site including ni to recover the k bit ki. As a result, we can recover all the 128 k bits when the with the complexity, with this complexity. For other three versions of Klot AAD, we can launch the uh, similar conditional cube attacks to recover their 4K bits. And this is our result. Compared with previous work using dif uh, differential linear attacks, our work uh, cannot extend the attack round, but we can achieve the key recovery in a practical time since our complexity is very small. Uh, finally, we give a summary uh, of our work. I mean, this work we aim to evaluate the security of Klot AAD against the cube-like attacks, specifically conditional cube attacks. We improved the previous conditional cube attacks by exploiting the linearization and division property methods. We recover the 4 kbs in the rounded reduced initialization phase for all members of Klot AAD family. According to our attacks, we conclude that Klot AAD cannot be threatened by conditional cube attacks. In addition, we found that the first positive rate, rate is larger than 99% when the conditional equation does not hold. We guess the reason is that the higher degree uh, monomials are very sparse in the output state where its edge break uh, uh, struct is very special. It's worthy of further discussion and uh, study. Uh, that is all my report. Thank you.